Are there any concerns about, because you're so different from the norm, are there ways that that challenges your, your ability to work as a school in that environment? Well, in many respects, we're very lucky here in Ireland, actually, because it's quite straightforward for us to operate as an independent school and mm. become registered as such through TUSLA, which is the child welfare agency that deals with education outside of the state mainstream education system. Mm -hmm. That's quite straightforward and, and regulated in that way. Insurance, you hit the nail on the head there. That's mm -hmm. really the big, yeah, the big challenge uh, or was very challenging when we first started the school to find um, an insurer willing to cover us. But we did manage, but it is, yeah, it, and I think it is still very difficult and mm -hmm. um, it's way more expensive than yeah. I imagine um, other school models might be because mm -hmm. of the freedom and because of the, you know, unusual nature of it or the new nature of it mm -hmm. it's an mm -hmm. unknown so there's a premium on that yeah yeah i don't know is there anything else in particular yeah that no and i mind? think in in time like finding yeah. a finding a premises is challenging so we're also part of a network of schools we kind of formed an association there a few years ago with we were the second school to open a school opened in wicklow two years mm -hmm. before so together we formed an association democratic education ireland and there's four schools open now in the country with three, four more due to open in the next two years. So that's amazing, really, for such yeah. a small country for us to have so many schools open. And it's one of our kind of missions is that we would have it would be accessible for anybody who wants it, you know, in the next 10 years or so. And the reason I'm mentioning that, that the thing that comes up as the biggest challenge for new schools to open is finding a place to open and also insurance but the insurance thing is getting a bit easier now because we're all insured with the same insurer essentially yeah. mm -hmm. and now we have to argue the tasks and try and get the yeah the cost down yeah. uh, because, because there's only one place i suppose they can it's not very competitive from that point yeah, of view. yeah yeah um, but with the local authorities once you're in a, in a premises that's been zoned appropriately and we all we all have kind of ended up zoning in on old national schools and yeah. we're also lucky from that point of view there's a huge glut of old national schools sitting around the country because they were all the smaller schools were amalgamated at certain times over our history with bigger schools and then new modern buildings were built and there's loads of old national schools around the place and they have the right zoning so obviously you still have the challenge of raising funds to buy them or to you know get some sort of release the, the local authorities can't really argue with that because it, <laughs> the is there for it to be a school and they've been i find we find them very very supportive we we were you know got on board with them i suppose very early on at the very mm. beginning of our project we one of the first things we did was have a meeting with the council and ask them you know told them what our project was and ask them where they where we could operate basically and um, mm. so but they've been really supportive and our and the local community have been very supportive as well having a having a school back here has been has brought a lot into the community and the neighbors are all really positive about it this is the agentic schools podcast where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg.